And this is a message I want to bring this morning. And it's, I will title it you know, so that it's simple. Give yourself to prayer. I repeat, give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to prayer. My people, are you unhappy? Give yourself to prayer. Are you sad? Give yourself to prayer. Are you lacking in finances? Give yourself to prayer. Are you sick in body? Give yourself to prayer. Are you depressed, anxious, with anxiety? Give yourself to prayer. Are you worried about tomorrow? Are you are you worried about your next meal? Give yourself to prayer. Are you disturbed in mind? Are you lacking sleep at night? Give yourself to prayer. Are you gr grieving the, the dead of a loved person in your family? Maybe you just buried someone uh, a month ago, two months ago, or even as I speak right now, there is a burial that is planned of a relative. I know it's hard, but give yourself to prayer. Are you trying to get customers to come to your small business because there is no money? Or do people owe you money and they're not paying back? You know, someone owes you money and they're not paying it back. Give yourself to prayer. Are you lacking in anything? Are you fearful about tomorrow? Are you, are you fearful about the state of the world today? Give yourself to prayer. If we are to have victory, if me and you, and I'm talking to you and me who have believed God, if we are to have victory, just tell me, where is that victory going to come from? It's going to come from heaven. It's going to come from God the Father, the Father of lights, the Father of spirits, the Father of all flesh. And how does it come? He taught us the way. The Lord told us how to get blessings, how to get victory. He said, man ought always to pray. Man ought always to pray. Do you remember the Lord on the very night that he was to undergo the, the, the worst temptation any man will ever go forever. No one has gone through what the Lord went through the night before he was crucified. He was still praying. Can you imagine what the Lord was going through? He was to carry the weight of the sin of man in eternity, so heavy. He, he knew the pain that he would go through. He knew what he had to do, yet he was in, in that garden of Gethsemane praying. So me and you should not have an excuse and say, I am so depressed, I can't pray. That's what we say, right? You and me, I say that sometimes. I am so sad, I can't pray. My head is full. I, I, I am being tempted so heavily. I've been, I've been, I have been offended by some people. So badly offended. I can't pray. I'm depressed. I have a lot of anxiety. I have fear. I can't pray. But the Lord, I will wait for that vehicle to, to pass. Because it's, it's too loud. The Lord, in that night of temptation, the biggest, worst temptation any man can or, or can ever go through or will ever go through. No one will ever go through what the Lord went through that night. He still prayed. Three times he would go back and pray the same prayer. Then he comes to Peter and the other apostles, a couple of them, and tells them, pray that you guys don't fall into temptation they never prayed they, they they were sleepy they slept they wanted to sleep you know i'm too sleepy to pray tonight 
that's what you and me say right because you've been watching television and netflix and movies and scrolling on the tiktok dances and i'm not blaming you for it i'm just bringing a point we waste a lot of time three four five hours scrolling on the internet and then you realize it's my time to go to bed and you're so sleepy and you just go and say our father who is art in heaven hallowed be thy name uh, amen and you jump right into bed you did not give yourself to prayer give yourself to prayer no excuses no excuses because when peter did not pray you know what happened he denied the lord because if he had prayed along with the lord he would not have gone through that backsliding he would not have backslidden he backslid just because i don't know can you hear me the, the there is a mower right here where i am in the field that is too noisy and it just started when i came here what a destruction I just hope you guys can hear me oh my god it's just too loud I'm just gonna wait a little bit Ooh. why now <laughs> I'll be glad that they haven't mowed me yet so I'm still in intact <laughs> yeah so I, I hope it's not too loud but it will be loud so just try and hear me let me come closer to the microphone we give ourselves excuses not to pray and we like being busy i've been busy i never had time to pray but the lord told told the disciples that they needed to pray so they don't fall into temptation the the, the most important night of their discipleship after three years of following him loving on him saying i will die for you just because he did not pray he fell into temptation Come on you mosquito so i'm here just to tell people again it's a simple message give yourself to prayer are are you happy are you happy about something did you finish your education you're happy give yourself to prayer are you excited about something oh let me wait again for this thing to pass Too loud. Okay, back to the message. He, he went a little bit far. Back to the message that I'm saying. Guys, we need to give ourselves to prayer. You could be lacking. You could be having. You could maybe you've been promoted. Maybe your business never closed during Corona. You still had people coming in. Give yourself to prayer. You can give thanks. You can sing hymns. You can praise the Lord. You can thank Him. But you could be on the other spectrum where you're suffering. Remember, Hannah had depression. Hannah of the Bible had depression. Why? Because she could not bear a child. But she, the moment she could not eat, she could not pray, she could blame the husband. She, he, instead of taking it to God in prayer, Two more seconds and mosquitoes are eating me but it's all right they can have a little bit of my blood they need to eat as well uh, so guys what I'm saying is this Hannah when she prayed she used to, to, to blame the husband and the husband would get angry I'm not God I can't give you ch a child but the moment she went into the temple the depression left her and she gave birth to a great prophet what am I saying until we discover that our victory is in prayer, we will continue to blame this, blame that, blame this. You lent a friend some money. She has not paid you back. Or he has not paid you back. And all you do, one last time for this mower. Not too bad this time. All you do is complain, this guy can't give me money, this guy, and maybe that guy is also dropped. But if you took it to the Lord, the Lord is going to enable that guy to pay you back. 
your money. Do you get the point? Like, you should pray for everything. Which also means that we are trusting God for everything. Even our daily bread. Jesus taught us to tell the Father to give us our daily bread. Our daily bread is what we eat every day and the drink. The amount of water and the amount of nutrition that we need. No one thinks because you, you went to work, you bought some food, you don't think that is from God. So praying about everything is the key. My point, give yourself, give yourself to prayer on all circumstances. You could be on the happy spectrum. You could be on the satisfied spectrum. Some people are just satisfied because everything is going as it should, right? Nothing has gone wrong to you. Things are good. You've been blessed with a huge blessing. You got a child. You, 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 you got the visa you were waiting for. You got something. God has blessed you. You are on the happy spectrum. Give yourself to prayer. That is thanksgiving. As well, pray for, for the people who are on the other side of the spectrum. Who are not as happy as you are. So you, you ought always to pray. If you're giving thanks for yourself. Are you, are, are you praying for others who are on the other side. Who are not so happy. So guys, I just came to say. To reiterate. And to call you brothers and you sister you guys out there pray 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 do you have people hating on you give yourself to prayer do you have people not liking you and you're not getting the validation that you should get you're not getting the recognition that you should get give yourself to prayer i mean anything that disturbs your heart maybe you want to be recognized which is okay at your workplace for some efforts you're doing but people are not recognizing and that's demoralizing you it is we all need to be told you're doing good like you should tell me hey Lawrence you're doing good preaching why to encourage me to continue preaching uh, at your workplace if you don't get from 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 your your boss that good appraisal how does it feel or you get a negative appraisal you need to get a good appraisal so that you can feel good encourage encourage your children encourage your wife good things validate them because the opposite seems like it comes from the enemy who discourages people who is always not giving people compliments telling them how bad they are it's Satan so being validating people around you and not being negative is of God because God is good be strong and courageous that's what God told Joshua he, he did not tell him fear fear and pray so that I can help you he said no have faith that's faith faith is positive so I guess I just went into another subject I'm just bringing up the point that there is always something you could pray about Maybe it's your family. You could be good, but your brothers and sisters are not doing well. And even though you're blessed, Satan can use even your own family to bring you down. That's, prayer is so important. You could be blessed, but all your blessing, maybe you're a prayerful person. God is hedging around you like, like Job. But maybe he's not hedging your brother because he's not a prayer, prayerful person. Satan can use that brother to destroy the very blessing that you have. He can bring a sickness in your family to make you poor. You were rich yesterday, but tomorrow, Satan can use anyone. Maybe a sickness, maybe a, a just any stupid thing you can name and your blessing can go like that. So you need a hedge not just around you, but around your mother around your parents, around your brothers and their wives and their children. Because it, it comes back to you somehow. Right? Even your church. Do you pray for your church? Your pastor. Your preacher. I come online here every day to just encourage someone. Pull someone to the kingdom of God. Have you ever thought and said, Oh, I know that preacher. Lawrence. I'm going to pray for Lawrence tonight. God help him 
fulfill him more so he has more to give i'm just yeah, i'm calling you to pray for me but i'm just saying there are a lot of things that we need to pray about and i think this explains why jesus said men ought always to pray because there are a lot of issues which are interconnected that we need to pray about you're no man is an island man now let's talk about this season we're going through since 2020 even the very faithful christians you me who pray who, who are seeking the lord you can be happy when the world is not happy you get my point we need to pray for the world we need to pray for government because the governments affect us because they could make a stupid decision that affects the very very faith that we, we carry so uh, if you think if you think you're an island it's just me and, um, and just all you your circle of prayer is just our father who is earth in heaven which is the beginning the lord taught us how to begin if that's all you do you're going to realize that everything is interconnected including including the whole world dropping down from that you know let's say if this is a pyramid the world is on top then the government then your local government then your workplace then your boss then your family i mean everything is so interconnected you need to pray the, the we need to broaden our prayer not just a little circle because somehow everything will come and affect us at some point and at least you can say on that day of the feet of jesus lord i prayed you may not have seen your prayers doing any different in the world but you prayed your prayers may even on your family may have, may help maybe a 20 percent because you could have stubborn guys who don't like jesus the more the more is back here oh, needs to go i need to preach so at least on that day we can tell the lord i prayed your prayers may just help your family 50 percent at least it's not 100 percent unprotected you know what i mean because the lord can't force these guys including brothers and sisters to get born again i've been there before i've preached to my own brothers and sisters and they just never liked the lord and it, it, I, I couldn't understand why can't why don't they like jesus who gave his life for 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 us he died for me he bled the blood he held the pain for me who would not like that person who would not like a person who not only he he healed people he healed the blind he raised the dead he he did those miraculous things he fed them but after feeding after healing after delivering them of demons that were inside of them he goes ahead and now gives himself like anyone who rejects such a man you wonder what else they're looking for no one cares about you in this world no one would give po politicians would not give their life for you they just talk not even a brother and sister not even you or you can say let me die for my wife yes you or if you're a woman i would die for my husband you would say let him die so i can take care you'll have some reason like no one would so and this is called love because jesus said the greatest love is someone who lays down his life if, indeed if you reject such love it means you just want darkness you're yours you're you you will be lost in eternity because you have rejected love what else do you want god to do i don't know i i, I guess the spirit of god just led me there just to say it is not always that pr our prayers bring a hundred percent result if you pray for the world you may likely not see the prayer because the world is not going to be suddenly saved and love the lord and become utopia this is paradise on earth it won't but does it mean you shouldn't pray that's not what jesus said man ought always to pray so i'm just calling you lukewarm that is lukewarm you know you think you have a lot of trouble the world is an unhappy place right now i have to wear this mask and you're just discouraged you don't see the need to pray what am i going to do what can i change i am that voice in the wilderness god has sent to tell you 
give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to prayer. It does not matter whether you're, you're satisfied or not. Somehow the world is interconnected. You need to pray. Because Satan can use anyone. On Adam, he used his own wife. Cain was killed by his own brother. Do you think if he was praying, it's just a relative example, he was praying for his brother every day, do you think maybe he could not have died before his time? And his blood would not be crying from the ground? Maybe he would have lived a full life. See the point I'm making here? You need to pray for your wife. You need to pray for your children. By name, you need to pray for your neighbors. One day your neighbor could go crazy, take a gun and come shooting. You, you're gone. But all you did is come tired, watch Netflix, watch TikToks for three hours. Oh, it's time to go to bed. Oh, thank you, Father, for the day. Our Father, who is art in heaven, hallowed and amen. Thank you, Lord. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Shoot! In the sheets. You have prayed. Do you think you have really prayed as you should? You think you're obeying the commandments of Jesus to always pray? What did Jesus say? said my sheep know me and they hear my voice what is the voice of the lord the voice of the lord is calling you and me to give ourselves to prayer all the time pray about all the issues any issues that the lord you feel it you may not be able to pray for everything but you will feel every day a certain burden we call that the burden of the lord Sometimes I will get burdens of people that don't even know that I'm praying for them. I may be on Facebook just going and I just see and I see, and I see a man of God preaching. Maybe he's a small man of God. He has no church. All he does is online just to reach a soul. I pray for them. You know, you sometimes you scroll f Facebook and you see someone say, My mother is, in, in, is sick. Pray. And then people, people quickly go to comment se section. Quick recovery. Next video. Is that prayer? I don't know. I, I, I guess I, all I want to say, because the Lord died, the victory is already given. Jesus conquered the world. It doesn't look like it, but he did. It's just for us to go get that victory. We don't fight to win. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory because it's already there. But then how do you fight? What do you say a good fight of faith? Is it, is it fighting physically? It's just in prayer, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's just prayer. Christianity, following Jesus and prayer is inseparable. The importance of prayer and praying all the time prayer, fasting, stuff like that. You know, fasting is a form of prayer where you're beating up your body because you, your body as well, if you don't pray for your body, it rises up. I've walked to the Lord for a long time and I know sometimes when my body came and said, I'm in charge and I kept the Lord aside. You think Paul, when he writes, beat up your body, mortify, mortify, beat it up. And the, the body rises up oh I need this you have to say come on down my spirit rise up I'm a man of the spirit of the heart I walk in the spirit because if you don't pray your body will take control you'll see you'll find out that the flesh even the very very flesh which is just dust it's just dust anyway and this dust is very dangerous because sometimes the dust the very dust condemns the soul so once you realize the soul is the most important thing it's not this dust because this dust will go back to dust mortify the dust it rises up strongly man strongly when jesus told peter pray that you do not fall in temptation that's when the flesh of peter john and james rose completely said sleep sleep and your your master is being stricken by by satan because you know it was written strike the shepherd and scatter the sheep
But instead of praying, they knew that prophecy. The Lord was telling them they should have been praying, but the flesh came and said, made their eyes heavy with sleep. Even sleep sometimes is just a distraction. I'm not saying don't sleep, don't misquote me, but sleep sometimes, you realize just when you want to pray, about to go to bed, that's when sleep is he heaviest. I actually was thinking I was coming for 10, 10, I was coming for three minutes video, but I guess the spirit of God has just led me into, into all this to, just to prove a point. What is this man saying right here? Guys, wake up and pray. Give yourself to prayer. I keep repeating. I, th I think I've said that like 30 times. But let it register. If you don't remember anything I said here, let these words reverberate. Let them ring in your head and say, at least this man said, give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to prayer. Wake up one morning, you don't feel like praying. Remember these words, give yourself to prayer. And when you start, even when you don't feel like the Holy Ghost, one thing, he's faithful. Sometimes when you don't feel like it, I don't feel like praying at all. But you just drag yourself, you drag yourself and, and start. But the moment you're saying you're in a minute, the Spirit of God will give you and you will more words, more power. You'll find out, oh my God, I did not feel like it. But end of it will say, I prayed effectively. How many of you can say this has happened to you? But you need to beat up your flesh. Your flesh is also a problem. I'm sorry, uh, it just came. Don't, don't ask me to interpret and say don't speak in tongues because you're not interpreting. That's a cliche that goes in church. Effectively making people not to pray in tongues. Paul said there is order but then he said do not prohibit speaking in tongues. When it, if it's a public and you're just alone on the microphone, you need to interpret. But people need to pray in tongues. It's powerful. That's why, you know, Satan doesn't want people to do it. Anyhow, um, I'll just be ending it here. Give yourself to prayer.